Well, lesson two in unit five piggybacks off the ideas in lesson one, uh, where we looked at solutions to differential equations using geometry. Uh, now we're going to use numerical analysis to go nuts. We're going to take a look at solutions to differential equations. Uh, we're still going to use a lot of geometry. Uh, today we just use analytic geometry using something called, oh, we're not going here, we're going all the way down here, using something called Euler's method. Euler's method named after the famous mathematician method. No, just kidding. Euler, Leonard Euler, uh, one of the most brilliant people that has ever contributed to our discipline. Um, and in Euler's method, the basic idea is that we use teeny pieces of tan line to approximate the curve in small spaces. And because we do that, we use the teeny tiny pieces of tangent line to approximate the curve in small windows, uh, we get shockingly accurate solutions. So consider the following. Uh, we're going to let dy dx equal x plus y minus 1. And we're going to say that when x equals 1, y equals 1. Use Euler's method with two subintervals to approximate the y value at 1.2. That's the idea. So in, in an Euler's method situation, you know what the derivative is. Um, it's very hard to solve for y explicitly. I think that's, that's pretty straightforward. I think that is pretty straightforward. Uh, you know where we are at y equal, uh, when x equals 1, and we want to know where we are at x equals 1.2. So permit me to draw a ridiculously out-of-balance figure. This is x equals 1. Somewhere out here is x equals 1.2, where we want to get to. And we want to use two subintervals. Now, we know that the actual curve is a curvy thing. And so it's not going to do what we're going to pretend that it's going to do for our purposes. We're going to pretend for our purposes that at 1, 1, we figure out what the tangent line is, and we start heading in that direction, and we move straight line for a little while. So at x equals 1, y equals 1, what is the slope of the tangent line? 1 plus 1 minus 1, that's 1. So I'm going to draw a line with a slope of 1. And we're going to pretend that that line is the curve, small window. So some questions need to be answered. How do we get slope? Well, slope is delta y over delta x. And I'm going to say delta y1 over delta x1, because there will be other delta y's and other delta x's. And I'm going to going to rely on a numbering system. Well, here's the thing. We know what delta x1 is. Delta x1 is 0.1. And so delta y1 is 1 times 0.1. That's 0.1. So what is the y value when x is 1.1? Well, it's approximately the previous y value plus the change in y, that's 1.1. So this point here has coordinates 1.1, 1.1. Well, at that point, we reset everything. We say, OK brand new, let's figure out what the equation of the tangent line is at that point. Let's figure out what the slope of the tangent line is at that point. And that may be a new trajectory. But whatever that new trajectory is, we're going to follow it for the next point one. 
So at 1.1, 1.1, what is the slope of the tangent line? 1.1 plus 1.1 minus 1, that's 1.2. And so I'm going to draw a piece of tangent line with a slope of 1.2. And I'm going to ask the same questions I asked before. How did this slope come to be? Well, slope is a change in y over a change in x. And as before, I know what the change in x is. The change in x is 0.1. So if that's the case, the change in y is change in x times 1.2, that's 0.12. Which means that the y value at 1.2 is approximately the previous y value plus the change in y and that's 1.22. If your delta x's are small enough, you can actually get shockingly good answers. Obviously, the smaller your delta x's are, the better your answer is going to be. But Euler's method will always go this way. Euler's method will always allow us will always allow us to find numerical approximations for solutions. I, I got to do one more. I, I'll do one more. Let's pretend that the dy dx thing is x plus 1. And when x is 1, y is 2. Uh, let delta x be 0.5 approximate y of 2. Approximate y of 2. Well, here's 1, 2. And somewhere out here, figure not drawn to scale, is x equals 2. And we're going to use a delta x of 0.5 to get us there. So we're going to use two subintervals. Well, how will this go? Coming out of 1, 2, what is the slope of the tangent line? The slope of the tangent line is 1 plus 1. That's 2. So I'm going to draw a tiny piece of tangent line with a slope of 2. And I'm going to ask myself, how did this slope come to be? Well, this slope is a change in y over a change in x. But I know what the change in x is. That's 0.5. And so the first change in y is 2 times a half. That's 1. Which means that the y value at one and a half is approximately the previous y value plus the change in y. That's three. This point right here is the point 1.53. Well, then what happens? We reset the whole mess. We say, okay, new tangent line. And that new tangent line on a new trajectory will represent the function between 1 and a half and 2. So at x equals 1 and a half, what is the slope of the tangent line? Slope of the tangent line is 1 and a half plus 1. That's 2 and a half. And I'm going to ask the same questions I asked before. How did that slope come to be? Well, that slope is the second change in y over the second change in x. But I know what that second change in x is. That second change in x is 0.5. And so the second change in y is right. So at 2, 
What's my approximate y value? My approximate y value is the previous y value plus the change in y. That's four and a quarter. Uh, by the way, just so we're all clear, uh, the College Board has never asked a student to do Euler's method more than twice. So if you're in an AP class, you can pretty much expect that if you're asked to do Euler's method, you will be asked to do it twice. Um, on a side note, how bad an approximation is this? How bad is it? Well, the actual solution curve, let's see, let's take a look at the derivative. I need something whose derivative is x plus 1, and that would be 1 half x squared plus x, plus a constant, the constant that I would need to get the curve to go through 1, 2, and that happens to be 1 half. So if we figure out what y of 2 actually is, it's actually 4 and a half. Now, a difference of 0.25, it's not great. What made it not great? Well, it wasn't great because we used a very large delta x. We used a delta x of 0.5. If I wanted a better answer, I would want to take smaller delta x's. Obviously, the smaller the delta x is, the better your approximation can be. So what do you need to take away? You need to take away that to do Euler's method to approximate a differential equation numerically, you want to draw a teeny tiny piece of tangent line. You want to use the slope of that line to approximate a change in y. And then you want to restart the process as many times as is necessary to get yourself from where you know to where you don't know. And if you can do that, you're in great shape. So uh, this lesson is a we start to learn it. Uh, and then tomorrow's lesson, there won't be a video lesson three because lesson three is just practice time. We're going to need practice time. It's OK to need practice time. And that's all she wrote. So I'll see you in time for lesson four. And lesson four is where we hit analysis, where we begin to do these things by analyzing. OK. Thanks, everybody.